Superman. I'm Betty Wall. I consider you my friends. And I get him. I was like, ooh, I better talk loud and slow. Yay. Betty White, the incomparable icon, bid adieu to the world two years ago, leaving an everlasting impact on our hearts and the entertainment scene. In a heartwarming tribute, friends and co-stars reminisce, shedding light on Betty's genuine warmth, kindness, and unwavering positivity that defined her on and off the screen. Beyond being an actress, Betty was a trailblazer and beacon of joy whose legacy transcends generations. Join us as we take a deep dive into the personal stories affirming her greatness and confirming the rumors surrounding her passing. Discover the extraordinary life of Betty White, where every moment is a testament to her timeless spirit, early life. Betty Marion White kicked off her journey in Oak Park, Illinois on January 17, 1920, a date that marked the beginning of a legendary story. Let's set the record straight. Betty wasn't a nickname for Elizabeth, as some folks assumed. It was her legal moniker from the get-go. Born to Christine Tess and Horace Logan White, a lighting honcho hailing from Michigan, Betty was the lone star in her family constellation. Shaking off the Illinois roots, the Whites rolled into Alhambra, California, when Betty was a mere year old, seeking greener pastures during the harsh times of the Great Depression. Horace, ever the hustler, dabbled in crafting crystal radios, trading them for essentials, and occasionally, for man's best friend. Dogs became currency during those tight times, and Horace played the game well. Her schooling days were bathed in the Beverly Hills glow. Horace Mann Elementary School and Beverly Hills High School molded her mind until she tossed her graduation cap in 1939. The spark for her love of wildlife ignited during family retreats to the Sierra Nevada. Initially eyeing a ranger gig, she hit a snag. Turns out the ranger club was a boys-only affair back then. No worries, though. Betty pivoted to writing and performing, discovering her passion on the stage instead. Post-graduation, she and a school buddy belted out tunes from The Merry Widow on an experimental TV show, a bold move in the era when television itself was a work in progress. Modeling gigs followed, but the real acting debut went down at the Bliss Hayden Little Theater. World War II came knocking in 1941, and Betty, embodying the spirit of service, signed up with the American Women's Voluntary Services. Betty is behind the wheel of a PX truck, hauling military goods to the Hollywood Hills. But that wasn't all. She lit up events for troops bound for foreign shores. Reflecting on her wartime stint, Betty mused about it being a strange time, a period out of sync with the world's rhythm. Yet, it was precisely in those odd beats that her White's symphony of life started to crescendo. TV stardom. Betty White's journey to stardom reached new heights with her breakout role as Sue Ann Nivens in The Mary Tyler Moore Show. A powerhouse behind her sweet smile, White showcased a sharp wit that earned her two Emmy Awards. Sue Ann, a witty co-worker in a Minneapolis TV newsroom, not only amused audiences with her pursuit of male colleagues, but also delivered funny and poignant quips at the expense of the show's star, Mary Tyler Moore. In a delightful contrast, White then charmed audiences as the sweet and naive Rose Nyland in The Golden Girls, a popular 80s sitcom featuring four elderly female friends. The show's success, spanning seven seasons and earning White yet another Emmy Award, proved that there was a significant audience for programs featuring older characters. Post-Golden Girls, White navigated her career with finesse. Despite the short-lived spin-off Golden Palace, her star continued to rise. As a sought-after guest star on various television series, she even played herself on The John Larroquette Show in 1996, bagging another Emmy Award. More recently, White graced the small screen with recurring roles on David E. Kelly's Boston Legal and the soap opera The Bold and the Beautiful. She also brought her comedic talent to the big screen with a supporting role in the 2009 romantic comedy The Proposal, starring Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds. While White's career maintained steady momentum over the years, it truly caught fire again in 2010. A humorous candy bar ad during the Super Bowl became a massive hit, propelling her back into the limelight. A Facebook campaign further solidified her place in pop culture history when she became the oldest person to host Saturday Night Live in May of that year. 
Initially hesitant, White described the experience to Newsweek as the scariest thing I've ever done, but acknowledged the challenge it presented. Continuing her streak, White returned to series television in 2010 with the sitcom Hot in Cleveland, initially signing on for the pilot but later becoming a permanent cast member. She praised the chemistry among the girls, declaring it a terrific show. Additionally, she took on the role of host in Betty White's Off Their Rockers, a hidden camera show that aired from 2012 to 2017, earning her an Emmy Award nomination. In 2012, the entertainment world celebrated Betty White's 90th birthday with an all-star television special. Icons like Ellen DeGeneres, Tina Fey, and Mary Tyler Moore joined the festivities. PBS honored her illustrious career with Betty White. First Lady of Television, a retrospective showcasing her 80-year journey in show business, from early variety series to standout roles on The Mary Tyler Moore Show and The Golden Girls to her resurgence as a sharp-tongued senior. Not one to rest on her laurels, White proved she was far from being relegated to the nostalgia bin. In 2019, she lent her voice to Toy Story 4, voicing a tiger-teething toy named Betty White. The following year, she headlined a Lifetime Holiday movie, cementing her status as a timeless talent capable of captivating audiences across generations. Betty White's career is a testament to her enduring wit, charm, and undeniable talent. Personal Life Betty White's love story is a roller coaster of twists and turns. While lending a hand with the American Women's Voluntary Services, Betty crossed paths with Dick Barker, an Air Force P-38 pilot. Sparks flew, and they tied the knot in 1945, only to find themselves living the simple life on a chicken farm in Ohio. But alas, simplicity wasn't Betty's cup of tea, and back to Los Angeles they went, separating within a year. Undeterred by the first bout, Betty hitched her wagon to Hollywood talent agent Lane Allen in 1947. However, the duo hit a roadblock as Lane dreamt of a family, while Betty aimed her spotlight on a thriving career. Boom! Divorce papers were signed in 1949. Fast forward to 1963 and Betty found herself head over heels for television host Alan Ludden. Their paths first crossed on the game show Password in 1961, and after a couple of proposals, they sealed the deal on June 14, 1963. Betty became Betty Marion Ludden, and for the next blissful 18 years, they were the epitome of relationship goals. Their love circle extended beyond romance, delving into high-profile friendships. Imagine being chums with literary heavyweight John Steinbeck. Betty spilled the beans on these celebrity connections in her 2011 book, If You Ask Me, and Of Course You Won't. Steinbeck's early draft of a Nobel Prize speech even found its way into Ludden's hands as a birthday gift. Talk about a literary friendship. Betty and Alan weren't just hobnobbing with writers. They struck up a close bond with blind musician Tom Sullivan in 1968. Picture this trio, Betty, Alan, and Tom, making waves in the entertainment scene. They even co-authored a book, Leading Lady, chronicling the adventures of Sullivan's retired seeing-eye dog. Family-wise, Betty and Alan didn't venture into parenthood together. Betty stepped into the role of stepmother to Alan's three kids from his previous marriage. When quizzed about her decision not to remarry after Alan's passing, she offered a sassy reply. Once you've had the best, who needs the rest? A sentiment that resonated with her viewers, leaving them nodding in agreement. Outside the realm of romance, Betty wasn't one to twiddle her thumbs. She was a force to be reckoned with dedicating over four decades to the Los Angeles Zoo and the Morris Animal Foundation. In her words, I'm actually the luckiest old broad alive. Half my life is working in a profession I love, and the other half is working with animals. As if that weren't enough, Betty dabbled in writing during the 80s and 90s, churning out gems like Betty White in person in 1987 and Here We Go Again, My Life in Television in 1995. In 2010, she inked a deal with G.P. Putnam's Sons, blessing readers with fresh insights in If You Ask Me and Of Course You Won't, and My Life at the Zoo Betty and Her Friends the following year. Married thrice, Betty affirmed that the third time was indeed the charm with Alan Ludden. Their love story, spanning from 1963 to his demise in 1981, 
remains etched in Betty's heart. From pilot Dick Barker to theatrical agent Lane Allen, Betty White's journey through love is a tale of resilience, sass, and a whole lot of laughter. The War Effort Famous for her comedic genius since the tender age of eight, White's journey extended beyond the entertainment realm. A true patriot, she served during World War II with the American Women's Voluntary Service. The U.S. Army acknowledged her dual roles, tweeting, We are saddened by the passing of Betty White. Not only was she an amazing actress, she also served during World War II as a member of the American Women's Voluntary Services. During the war, this volunteer group of over three lock strong undertook various tasks, from selling war bonds and delivering messages to driving ambulances, trucks, and even dog sleds. Their roles spanned navigation, aerial photography, aircraft spotting, and fire safety, leaving an indelible mark on history. Reflecting on those challenging times, White remarked, It was a strange time and out of balance with everything, a sentiment that resonates with the tumultuous periods we face today. Post-war, White's personal life took a turn as she married U.S. Army Air Force pilot Dick Barker. However, their union on an Ohio chicken farm owned by Barker's parents proved short-lived, ending after eight months. Undeterred, White's journey continued with a second marriage to Hollywood talent agent Lane Allen. However, when he requested she abandon her career for domesticity, White stood firm and refused. Her breakthrough came in 1949 when she secured a spot on Hollywood on television with host Al Jarvis. This marked the beginning of a stellar career that saw her clinch a Best Actress Emmy nomination in 1951. White's trailblazing continued as she became the first female host of a TV show after Jarvis and his successor, Eddie Albert. But it was her iconic roles in The Mary Tyler Moore Show and Golden Girls that catapulted her into the comedic stratosphere. Across her illustrious 90-year career, White scooped up eight Emmy Awards, three American Comedy Awards, three Screen Actors Guild Awards, and even a Grammy. Yet, success didn't come easy. In the early days, she faced rejection, with studios claiming she wasn't photogenic enough. World War II further complicated matters, disrupting her pursuit of acting gigs. Undeterred, White redirected her efforts to the American Women's Volunteer Service, driving a PX truck and organizing events to boost troop morale. In a 2010 interview with Cleveland Magazine, White reflected on those tumultuous times, noting, it was a strange time and out of balance with everything, which I'm sure the young people are going through now. Betty White's legacy is one of resilience, humor, and unwavering commitment, leaving an indelible mark on both the entertainment world and the annals of history. Betty White on Age In a 2012 chat with New York Times columnist Frank Bruni, the legendary actress shared that her positive outlook on death came from her mother. Betty White, who passed away at 99, now knows the secret of life's end, an aspect she faced fearlessly. During a 2012 Times Talks discussion with Frank Bruni, White expressed that growing older held no challenges for her attributing her ease to her mother's optimistic stance on death. My mother had a wonderful approach to death, White recalled. She always thought of it as, she said, we know we have managed to find out almost anything that exists, but nobody knows. What happens at that moment when it's over? And she said, it's the one secret that we don't know. So whenever we would lose somebody very close and very dear, she would always say, well, now he knows the secret and it took the curse off of it somehow. This perspective shaped White's own attitude towards death, as she told Bruni, I have no fear or dread of death, smilingly adding, but I'm happy as a lark to stay around as long as I can. Similar sentiments were expressed in a 2012 interview with Katie Couric on CBS Sunday Morning. White revealed that her mother always told her, nobody knows what happens when you die. People think they do. You can believe whatever you want to believe what happens at that last moment, but nobody ever knows until it happens. With an illustrious career spanning iconic shows like The Golden Girls and The Mary Tyler Moore Show, and later roles in Hot in Cleveland and The Proposal, White spent her recent years in Los Angeles indulging in crossword puzzles, card games, and watching documentaries, Jeopardy, and sports, especially golf. An advocate for animal welfare, 
She supported organizations like the Wildlife Learning Center, the Monterey Bay Aquarium, and Actors and Others for Animals. In a prelude to her 100th birthday celebration story, White shared her gratitude, saying, I'm so lucky to be in such good health and feel so good at this age. It's amazing. She attributed her upbeat nature to being born a cockeyed optimist, a trait she inherited from her mom that remained constant. I always find the positive. As news of Betty White's passing emerged, Dan Wakeford expressed deep sadness, honoring her decision to collaborate on celebrating her remarkable life and career in their recent cover story, Relationship with Her Agent. Betty White's life was pure joy, a journey she handpicked for herself, and she reveled in it until her passing at 99, shared Jeff Witchas, her agent and confidant. Even in her final moments, Betty knew she was adored by her fans, a fact that Witjaz made sure to reinforce. Millions out there still ask for you, Betty. Fan letters keep pouring in, and I'm fielding offers for you, he would tell her. I don't know if she fully embraced it, the magnitude of it, but I'd constantly remind her. I never wanted her to think the world had passed her by. It never did. Her happiness was evident in the life she led, as Witjaz reflects. Betty lived a great life, and she lived a life that she chose. She was happy. Every assurance of love was met with Betty's wry smile, a response that Witjaz found beyond the ordinary sentiment. I hope she knows. I think she did. It was something beyond love. Their connection went beyond a professional one. Witjaz, who confirmed Betty's peaceful passing, considered her more than a client. She was an incredible lady, hard to put into words, we had a special relationship, far more than just a client. As close friends, laughter was a constant companion. We became really good friends and we always laughed no matter what we did. She was always positive and she always saw the bright side. Which as shares, Betty's positivity extended to her promise to reach a hundred, a promise nearly fulfilled. In her final years, Betty chose the comfort of her LA home, spending each day surrounded by familiar warmth. Under a doctor's care, she navigated the COVID era with caution. Wit Jazz notes a period when she addressed fan letters, a practice that gradually slowed as her energy dwindled. She was reading. She just lived her life. She was home in her comfortable surroundings. Talks of her upcoming 100th birthday were lighthearted. Betty, let's start focusing on 101, Wit Jazz jokes. She, never one to make a fuss, responded with her trademark humility. Wow, that's a pretty large number, she said, downplaying the milestone. Which as shares how they joke about her diet, but Betty, in her usual style, never revealed any secrets to longevity. As she neared a century, Betty chose not to replace her beloved golden retriever Pontiac, who passed away a few years ago. Which as recalls her sensitivity towards animals, saying, she would prefer not because if she got a puppy or she went to a shelter, she'd always figured that the dog would outlive her, a testament to her caring nature. Her work speaks for itself, which as concludes, joining the millions mourning Betty White. Her legacy was sealed. It was sealed years ago. Betty White, a woman who chose her path, lived it with joy and left an indelible legacy that transcends time. Untimely Death Betty White's recent passing at the age of 99 has been attributed to a cerebrovascular incident, commonly known as a stroke, according to her death certificate. The Golden Girls star experienced a mild stroke six days before peacefully passing away in her sleep on December 31st. Amid rumors circulating on social media, White's agent, Jeff